We are live. We are live. <clears throat> yes, sir. Let's go. Let's see, you get some peeps up in here. What's good, people? What's good? What's good? What's good? <clears throat> what is good? We got the uh, Washington football team coming up here in a few days, y'all. We ready or we nervous? You know what I'm saying? I think we favored by um, one point in this game. Um, I think we favored by one point. Big Josh Ferguson in the building. What's up with you, Josh? Josh is... Uh, I'm gonna need a bottle of that eagle, man, Josh. I got me like four or five bottles <laughs> here at the house, man. Uh, they had some at um at Z and Z and Locust Grove for thirty nine ninety nine. It's limit one per uh, customer though, but they I'm sure they still got some in there, man. I went there uh, Tuesday, and they still they had a bunch of it on the shelf. So, excuse me, I'm sure they still got some uh, there. It's a store down here, uh, Macon, man. They had it at $39.99 at one point, and they let you get as many as you want. So I got me like three or four bottles <laughs> one of the last time I was in there. So I'm stocked up for a good amount of months, man. So I'm good for right now. I got me some EHT coming in, too. I'm doing a trade with a, a guy in one of the bourbon groups, man. He's going to trade me some EHT for some uh, Knob Creek. Don't take it easy on us today, says Facebook user. I got my well of white, red, and blue. Let's go, man. Let's go. I got me a little eagle rare in my cup, Josh. You know what I'm saying? So I'm ready, man. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk to Quincy tonight. Then going to watch some football. Then the weekend starts, high school football, you know what I'm saying? Favorite time of the year for me, man. I'm a football nerd, so I'm in hog heaven when the football season get here, man, especially before it get real, real cold, like November, December, when the weather like it is right now and when the weather's perfect. Man, 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 man. Look who's here, says Facebook user. Mo Lewis say that. Hey, y'all, if y'all don't mind – um. Just so I can interact with y'all a lot better, if you look on the caption under the second paragraph, there's a link that you can click, and that way I can see y'all name as y'all comment, if you don't mind doing that. It don't take but like two seconds, man. And that way, instead of coming up Facebook user, like a uh, few of y'all are, I can actually uh, know who I'm talking to. Makes it a lot easier for me. If not, it's no big deal. Tyrell, my man, Tyrell, what's up with you, Tyrell? Says, got some of that Buffalo Trace or Uncle Nearest, I got both of them, brother. What, what are you sipping on tonight, man? You know how we do the cigar lounge, man. You know how we do. Get us a good little drink. Get us a cigar. We just relax. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Tonight, for my cigar smokers, Liga Prevetta T52. Liga Prevetta T52. This is one of my all-time favorite cigars. Love them, love them, love them. <clears throat> I'll be watching the Braves. Magic number one, right? We win tonight. Clinch the division, which I'm sure we will. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll probably be uh, going back and forth also. Going back and forth. Tanisha said, look who's here. Says Facebook user. But, yeah, again, y'all, if y'all just click on that link, I could I could see your name. Your name will come up, and that way it don't always show Facebook user. It just makes it a lot more easier. Lisa's in the building. What's up, Miss Lisa? Lisa says, I love this time of year. Me too, Lisa. My favorite time of the year when it's still relatively warm outside and uh, it's not too cold outside. You got um, you got high school football, college football, NFL football, 
Uh, you got the, the towards the end of the season for baseball. So baseball players about to start. NBA about to crack, uh, crank up, you know, a few weeks away. So, man, this is my favorite time of the year, man. You can, as a sports fan, you can ask for a better time of the year. Yes, I'm watching tonight, too. I have Joe Mixon and Marvin Jones Jr. in fantasy. Good luck on your fantasy squad today, man. You think we got a chance against Washington? Yeah, I think we're going to beat Washington, bro. I think we're going to beat Washington. I think that win, I think the win against um, the Giants was a huge confidence booster for us. Even though it wasn't, even though it was only the Giants, but just get that one win, you know, giving the team some momentum, you know, and just getting that monkey off that old that Owen for whatever monkey off your back. I think we're gonna beat Washington. I think against Washington, we're gonna play the best game we played in eight, nine, ten months. I expect this to come out clicking on all cylinders against Washington. Expect Kyle Pitts to get his first NFL touchdown. Expect a big game for Matt Ryan, too. I think Matt Ryan will come out and have a big game. He he hears what everybody's saying. His arm is shot. So the competitor, competitor in him is going to want to prove all his naysayers wrong. So expect a big game from the Iceman. Three touchdowns for Matt Ryan. Kyle Pitts will catch one of those. Uh, shout out all the way from South South Korea. Oh, what's up, Ray? Ray Ellison in the building checking us out from South Korea. What's up with you, Ray? Man, checking in from South Korea. That's big, man. That's big. I had an uncle station in South Korea when I was a kid. Clayton Murray, you in the building, Clayton. You see your profile, your picture up there, man? Testing if I did it right. Was this the slogan for the foul? Because you you got you in there, Clayton. You in there, big dog. You was in there, bro. We we see you on TV with your um your your Falcons bandana, your Falcons uh hat. You know what I'm saying? Bird gang in the building. Norman Mills in the building. What's up with you, Norm? What's happening with you, Norman? Everybody checking in today. Big Mo Lewis in the building. The mixologist. What's up with you, Mo? What's up? I see the whole crew checking in. Uh, Tyrell said, Washington has a good front four on D, but their secondary is suspect. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I was listening to 92.9, and they were saying um, Chase Young don't even have a sack. Uh, yet this year. So we don't want to give him his first set. You know what I'm saying? So uh, our tackle going to have his hands full, you know, just keep keep the quarterback clean and keep his jersey clean. And we'll be all right. We'll, we, we'll beat Washington, man. We're going to beat Washington. We got that one in the bag. Uh, let's see. Lisa says, right, glad we're no longer related to, to the funk at Owens. I know, right? We out of that Owen group. We, we finally got off the Owen bus. It ain't no fun riding that Owen bus. We're officially off the Owen bus. Um, you say Matt Draco coming out. Yeah, man. Matt, Matt, about to, Matt about to let loose. He about to have a big, big, huge game against Washington, man. Looking forward to it. And that's coming from Sean Glover. It was good seeing our guys not screw up in the fourth quarter and pull that win out. It was ugly, but a win is a win. Yeah, man. Um Based on how we had been playing going into that game, we we got to take all the wins that we can get. And you're right. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a pretty win. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a pretty win. But the fourth quarter, we got to clicking on all cylinders. And um, it was a big win for us. Happy to see it. You know, got we did what we needed to do and got on the winning side of things for once. Yeah. Yeah, so we got Washington. I like what I see from uh Washington quarterback though, man. He look he looked pretty good for you know he get back there and do his thing. Uh Hinky, I think that's his name. What's up, our money? Our money is in the building. What's happening with our money? What's going on with your brother? Uh Facebook users we're curling on a one game winning streak. That is correct, sir. That is correct. We're gonna make it two after this weekend. My man, Mark Keith Abram in the building. What's up with you, Mark Keith? What's happening with you, bro? What is going on? Yeah, so everybody checking in, man. I say we're going to be watching it, y'all. I got us winning that game by at least six points. By at least six points. I think they'll make it close um, in the fourth quarter. But I think we're going to handle that game pretty much from the start to the finish. You know, I got us coming in doing our thing on them. 
Can't wait to Sunday to get this win. You and me both, Norman. You and me both, man. We we'll start off two and two, and then um, after Washington, who we played the Jets, right? Uh, New York Jets, and they got a record quarterback, Zach Wilson, who has not looked good so far this season. So I expect us to go on a three-game win streak and be three and two, y'all. Those are my expectations. I expect us to be three and two. You know what I'm saying? Get back on the winning side of things. That, that's what I'm looking at for this team, us to be three and two. If I'm not mistaken, I think Washington QB is from Atlanta as well, right? He may be, Ray. Um, I can't say. I'm, I'm honestly not sure, but he may as well be. I'm sure somebody in the comments will, will confirm or deny that, but I'm not sure myself. Here we go. Can't wait to hear this this week. I know, right? Winning, huh? Yeah, Facebook user. I think we're going to get that win. We're going to get that dub, man. We're just going to get that dub. We is gonna get that dub. <clears throat> gonna get that dub. Um, let's see. Who am I got us being the Jets? I got us being the Jets too, man. Just man, we we're not finna lose no Zach Wilson. We better not lose no Zach Wilson. Better not lose no Zach Wilson, y'all. Jets in London. Yeah, yes. You going to the game, Lisa? You going to London? You going to the game? Not sure about this week. Um. Also, y'all, um, as y'all can see on the caption, uh, tonight in the Sugar Lounge, you know, we got one of my boys that going to hop on the, hop on here in the Sugar Lounge with us. He going to talk to us for a spell. Uh, one of Atlanta's, specifically East Atlanta's favorite sons, you know what I'm saying, a damn good dog, you know what I'm saying? And y'all don't hold it against him, but he played for the Cowboys, you know what I'm saying? But he, he repping GA, so he's still family, you know what I'm saying? We got a real damn good dog in the building, East Atlanta zone. Mr. Quincy Carter is in the building. What's up with your QC? Man, what's good with you, man? Hey, not a whole lot, brothers. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Looking good, man. Everything good over there? It's good, man. Shoot, man. I'm just letting God do his work. And he's working through me and leading me. And, uh, man, I can't complain, man. Key is good. Mom's good. I can't complain at all, man. Man, it's great to hear that, brother. It's great to hear that, man. It's great to hear that. Y'all, um, again, we got Quince in the building. He's going to give us a little, little bit of his time. Uh, before we get started, y'all, I just want y'all to know that me and Quincy – we have a history, you know what I'm saying? We have uh -oh. a <laughs> we have uh -oh. a <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all real quickly about my our history. I've already told a few of y'all, but his high school, which is southwest DeKalb in DeKalb County, played my high school in the semifinal game. What year was that, QC? 95? 95. 1995. The winner went on to play for the state championship. Now Quince's team did beat my school, Warner Robins High School. And I joke with Quince every time we talk. I say, Quince, you lucky I got hurt. Because I got hurt. <laughs> I tore my ACL. If I went and got hurt, Quince, we was going to bust y'all ass, man. <laughs> but no, in all serious, y'all, like, we played against each other, man. And I'm going to tell y'all, man, this was Quince's high school team, so I was the cap. That was one of the best offenses I've ever played against or ever seen on tape in high school. And they were led by Quincy. Uh, they were loaded, of course, at quarterback with Quincy. They had a great running back who was fast as I don't know what, had a, um, a speedster at wide receiver, and they were very explosive on offense. I think they were averaging about 40 points a year. Am I correct? Yeah, I, I like how you setting this up. Go ahead and finish. <laughs> Go ahead, because I know what you're gonna say next. How many how many points we scored against y'all? Go ahead and say, yeah, you setting it up nice. Go ahead, finish. Yeah, you know what? They were averaging 40 points a game. We came into this game ranked number four in the nation. They had the state's best offense. We had the state's best defense. We held Mr. Carter and his offense to seven points. They beat us seven to zero. Quincy, I'm gonna tell you this every time we talk, dog. If I would have got to play in that game, that ring you got would have been mine, brother. I just gotta keep it real, man. Yeah. Man, <laughs> listen, I'm gonna tell you this, man. I'm I'm in recovery, dog. 
And I'm I'm telling you right now, it looks like you might need to do a little bit of my work, though, man. I'm telling you. Because you're going to have to get over this somehow, some way. You're going to have to get over this. Because this would have, could have, should have. You're going to have to get over this. <laughs> I can't help it, brother. Man, that man, that was a that was my first heartbreaking loss, y'all. First heartbreaking loss, and we played the game in Atlanta. You know, we coming from Middle Georgia, you know, and they pretty much on the outs in Atlanta, outskirts of Atlanta. And man, they had home field advantage. We get off the bus, they we kids, we 16, 17. They talking all kind of shit to us. Quincy coming out, lean his squad. He coming telling us, "Oh yeah, we about to whoop y'all ass today." You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> they had intimidated, intimidated us before we even flipped the coin. But hey, it was great just just watching this man do what this man do because on the sideline, I saw firsthand why Quincy was Quincy. And I'm gonna tell y'all this, y'all. And, and Quincy, I'm not saying this just because you are here. I've said this to this to this group before you even came on this live before. But I'm telling y'all, Quincy Carter in high school, he was the first Mike Vick of Atlanta mm. from a high school perspective. I'm talking about a local celebrity in high school, Mr. Atlanta, the king of Atlanta in high school, y'all. This man, and this man's name stretched nationwide. I was hearing mm. about this dude when I was in like ninth grade. I'm like, who the fuck is Quincy Carter? <laughs> <laughs> Who, who is he? You know what I'm saying? But um, I just want to say that Quest, go ahead and get that out of the way because you know we always go back and forth about that, man. But yeah. um, let's get started, brother. Uh, Quest, if you don't mind, you know, tell us where you was born. You you know, you was raised and obviously your high school. Yep, man. I was born in Chicago. <clears throat> Actually, I was born in Bloomington, but went to Chicago straight out, uh, straight out the hospital, um, uh, and um. Uh, Shoot, we moved to Atlanta, man. We moved to Atlanta when I was three. Uh, actually, I stayed in Atlanta first. Uh, stayed in Mountain Park uh, on Custer Avenue till I was about, shoot, what, 12. And then that's when I moved to, uh, actually, I moved to Ellenwood first um, with my godmom and then eventually settled in another neighborhood in Ellenwood. Uh, but I stayed in Wishing Well first in Ellenwood and then, uh, me and my mom moved to another neighborhood in Ellenwood, which, you know, is right on the border of Decatur. And so, man, that's my home. That's where I grew up. And, uh, shoot, that's who made me. Zone 6 in the building. Zone 6. Markeith Abrams said that's true. Everybody in Decatur, Atlanta, New Quincy Carter. Hey, Markeith, you know it just like I know it. This, I, got, I always say Quincy was the first Mike Vick before Mike Vick to set that city on fire. And he was in high school doing this, y'all. This is the mid nineties. We didn't have social media where you can just boost your platform. This man was making his name known just on the football field, on the baseball field, doing the thing that he do. Speaking of baseball, Quincy, um, you were a you were a two sports star. You know what I'm saying? As far as I know, you might have ran track or wrestling. You did everything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us about your your high school baseball career, also, man. Man, shoot, you know something. I started at Gresham Park, man, uh, and that was my first sport I ever played. Fell in love with it instantly. Uh, went on uh, to shoot. We got as close as the World Series, uh, actually the game before the World Series, so we didn't make it uh, when I was 12 years old, but I was playing for the Mets at Gresham Park. And, um, and man, I got the opportunity to go play travel baseball with East Cobb, and I took it. Uh, so I played travel ball from about 12 all the way through uh, high school and uh, and really, man, started making a, a name for myself um, in the, on the travel uh, travel ball circuit and ended up getting drafted by, you know, my hometown, another one of my hometown teams, the Chicago Cubs, man. So it was a dream come true. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Did you start playing uh, – at what age did you start playing football and baseball, you know, in regards to being a child? Around what age were you? Yeah, I, I was a late bloomer on football. So I didn't start playing – I think I was 9 or 10. Yeah, I think it was like 65, 75 pounds. We went by pounds then. Um, but, you know, baseball I started at 7. Um, 
So yeah, man, from from the age of nine, that's when I started playing both. Of, you know, I actually played basketball, but I wasn't that good at it, so don't nobody ever talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you dominate football and baseball, you can't get you can't get all three, Quincy. You know what I'm saying? You gotta leave know, some right? for somebody well, else. Well, I definitely wasn't messing around with Angelo Taylor and Terrence Tramiel, Jermaine Stringer, Marco Shepard. So I wasn't messing with them on that track. Crenshaw, Corey Taylor. So you can go on and on, man. You know what? I remember Angelo. Uh, he was like a world-class sprinter, right? Heck yeah. He played yeah. against y'all. No, he was a receiver. Yeah, he played against y'all. Uh-huh. I definitely remember him, man. And you know what's crazy? That was his first year ever playing football. Y'all championship year. That was his first year ever playing football. Matter of fact, look, let me tell you how, how much talent we had at our high school. I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't even win most athletic. Angelo won it because he was the best. Ba- I swear to God, he was the best basketball player. Hell, he came out and 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 caught a thousand uh thousand yards worth of uh, catches in football, winning the state championship. And hell, he was all world, and damn near won a state championship in uh, in track by itself. <laughs> damn, I remember him, man. I, in fact, I remember you threw a pass to him. You overthrew him in, a, in a, the semifinal game. He had our cornerback beat. <laughs> I don't know oh, if you man. remember that play, but I, I no, saw it in like, man, this guy can fly. No, I remember. It. I remember. remember. It. Hey, man, let me tell you this though, man. Uh, why you keep bringing that game up, man? We played so conservative against y'all, cause you you was missing, and we knew that. So we didn't just unleash on y'all either, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. We played we played championship football. Shit, we was out there playing chess. You know? Y'all did. Y'all definitely did, man. And that was a hell of a game, man. Just sitting there yeah, watching. Yeah. Of course, I wanted to play, but you know. You you respect when you see greatness, and y'all had a lot of great players. I forgive me, but I can't remember the running back name. But I know he had a almost Arby, fifty. Arby Richards, Arby Arby Richards, Bam Bam. Yeah, he, he was uh, like short, big, but he was everybody on y'all team was fast. That's what I remember. <laughs> he everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, and um, let me ask you this: since we're talking about our younger years, Quincy, obviously you making it to professional baseball, professional football, you obviously was a super special talent. Now, in middle school and high school, everybody, anybody can be good. I was good in high school, but I wasn't great. You you were special. At what age did you realize to yourself, I have a special talent that nobody else has? I'm, I'm, I'm the best person on the field every time I'm on the field. Or the, the baseball diamond. When at what age did you realize that? Well, baseball, I'll be honest with you, man. Uh, and before I go off talking about myself too much, man, it was all God given. You That's know, right. uh, it it was. He gave me the world, man. But uh but baseball, man, I really started feeling it around about 13, 14 that I had a shot, you know, of going beyond uh high school. And uh, making some noise, whether it was college, you know, my dream was to get drafted or whether it was getting drafted. So I started feeling that confidence when I was about 13 or 14 in baseball. Football took a little bit longer. Uh, And it really was, I would say, I would say my my playoff game against Douglas High School, uh, because Coach Buck had the reins on me a little bit. He had the leash on me. but he let me go um, that 10th grade playoff game against Douglas. Um, and that's when I really started feeling it. And uh, and I knew I had a chance at that point. Fast forward, I think, yeah, fast forward, we play them the next year in the playoffs too. And uh, in the playoffs, um, you know, we end up losing the Valdos in the Dome, 40 to 37. But that year too, um, kind of solidified for me confidence wise and uh man should i work my butt off like i said man i had great teammates around me we competed against each other at at you know at its highest level our spring game was just i mean oh i mean our spring game was damn to like 
a college atmosphere. Everybody, and we didn't even have stands. Everybody just around the track, man. It was such a family atmosphere. And man, you know, my surroundings, you know, made me better. My surroundings made me compete. My surroundings made me get in that classroom and say, hey, you know what I mean? Who's going to be the next one up out of Southwest Cap, man? So, you know, uh, and I, like I say, man, to be honest with you, I wasn't the best athlete. You know, I maximized my potential to the highest. But, man, I played with some dogs in high school, man. And, hell, we just made each other better, to be honest with you, man. Gotcha. And you mentioned something key. Uh, just a moment ago, you mentioned Douglas High School. Um, that was the high school of Mr. Jamal Lewis, am I correct? Yep. Uh-huh. Tell me about that game, because that was two heavyweights, because he was a heavyweight now. Yeah. He, he, got, he got with us. <laughs> that was our year. He got with it. Now, 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 you you remember who won that state championship that year, right? Your eleventh grade year? No, my twelfth grade year is when they beat us. We okay. beat them my my eleventh junior year two times in a row. But do you remember who won my twelfth grade year? Because you brought up Warner Robin. Now you want to bring up Doug getting with us. So yeah. I got to remind you, like you know who won the state that year, all right? I got the belt. Okay, 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 okay. All right, we're good then. We're good. I got, I got <laughs> hey, but he, hey, but no, no, uh, uh, he was a monster though. And he was a junior that year too, when they beat us. Yeah, they beat us good too. I think, man, I don't even remember this. Goal. I don't remember my losses like that. I remember me not playing that well though. I gotta be honest with you. But verbatimly, re me remembering what we lost. Oh heck, no, that ain't even in my pride system. <laughs> There you but go. No, man, Jamal Lewis did his thing, man. Shout out to him, too, man. He's doing a lot of good things in the community real quietly, too. I seen him about, shoot, about three years ago, man. I went down to his business down there on the west side, man. Jamal doing some good things, man. That's good. Another George boy and a high shout out to Jamal Lewis. And um, before we move on past our, our high school glory days, Quincy, can you tell, tell us who was the best – high school athlete you played against that was not a teammate that you can just recall off the top of your head? Mm. Man, I you know, I got to go with my boy Darren Hutchinson over there. Um, now, defensively, me playing against another opponent. I right. got to go uh, with Darren Hutchinson. Ended up going to South Carolina, linebacker for Douglas High School. Mm -hmm. He was a complete monster. I'm talking about, a, and was always around the ball, calling out all our plays. Hell, it wasn't fair sometimes, but I would say him. But, you know, Jamal's in that conversation, but me and him didn't go against each other like that, though. Right. Y'all both on offense. Exactly. Yeah, but, man, Darian, man, shout out to my boy, too, man. Bought me some, uh, came and gave me uh, a little Powerade. Uh, bottles for my uh, for a uh, couple of my camps too, man. Doing a lot of good things in the community too. Shout out to Darren, also. All right, and so um, you win the state, y'all win the state championship. You graduate and say that again. Y'all win the state Southwest. Okay, okay, my bad. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Carter, Mr. Georgia. You know, what I'm saying I'm gonna give you your props because you earned them. You know what I'm saying? They won a state championship. So at this point, Quincy, everybody wants you. You know what I'm saying? I got a few letters, so I know you got thousands of letters, bro. You know what I'm saying? Tell us how that feels for, 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 for us who didn't go get the kind of recruiting that you got. Like, how does that recruiting process go for somebody who's like, and, and, and memory serves me correctly, Quincy, was, wasn't you and Tim Couch the top two? In the mm -hmm. next quarterback? Yep. Okay. How does that how does that recruiting process go for a high school? You know, you're probably 17, 18 years old. How how does the recruiting go? Man, it, it was crazy. Um, you know, I got letters from almost every D1 school in 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 um in the SEC, ACC. Uh, but man, I you know, I was focused on my choices. You know, I know I wanted to go to a pro style offense. There was no way I was going to go to any type of running type offense with the quarterback because the black, you know, quarterback stigma was still on us. Uh, I know I wasn't going up north, uh, you know, the Penn States, the Michigans. And so it all got narrowed down quickly, quickly for me. 
And then, you know, I had I had the blessing, man, of having Coach Godfrey and uh, Steve Davenport, man, you know, and, and Steve laid out the blueprint for me, you know, as far as the recruiting. You know, uh, I got some good advice to go to the colleges, you know, during the summer times, check out the counselors, you know. So me and my mom, should we hit the road to Clemson, Florida State, Auburn. I never did an official visit where they put your name on the scoreboard and all that during the game and this and that. Like I wasn't, you know, um, you know, I wasn't really focused on all that. I was focused on who's going to be the coach, what I'm, uh, you know, what's going to be my degree, um, how close to home it was. So my choices, man, got narrow, you know, by my, by my checklist. Um, but man, I, you know, I, 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 you know, if I didn't feel like I was going to your school, I didn't actually waste your time. So mm -hmm. really, man, going into my senior year, uh, it was Georgia Tech. It was Georgia, but they were going on probation. So I didn't like that situation. Florida State had, um, I forgot to do name, signed late. So they got eliminated. Auburn still had uh, Craig there, um, Damian Craig. So I was feeling myself. I wanted to play as a freshman. So it got narrowed down real quickly. And then I had my baseball buddies from East Cobb. They were coming with me to play football. I mean, to play baseball with me at Georgia Tech. And then, shoot, man, being 15 minutes of, uh, away from a home-cooked meal, it got <laughs> settled real quick. And, 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 you know, I committed to Tech before the season because I didn't want nothing to get in the way of us going out and beating y'all in the dome, you know, and winning the state championship. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You got, it. You got the ring. <laughs> so, so I was focused on it, but man, I had the blessings, man, of Steve and Buck, man, and then my mom. If y'all knew my mom, <laughs> she wasn't playing the radio, man. So, uh, so man, I, I had it all, man. I had a great team around me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So definitely the uh being close to home, being close to family, that that actually worked in Georgia Tech's favor, it sounds like. Uh-huh. It did. It did. But then that money with baseball got in the way. And <laughs> school, I could take care of mama. And then I had the love for it too at the same time. It wasn't all about money, but I knew I couldn't do both at the same time. If I wanted to go play baseball in the NFL, I mean in, in major league baseball. I put all my attention there. The itch never left me in football. I wasn't having the greatest success in baseball, um, you know, and I wasn't focused enough, you know, to be honest with you, to put all my marbles into that. And so, uh, hey, Joe Hamilton was doing his thing at Georgia Tech. It wasn't no sense to me even going trying to compete for that because Joe, man, Joe, hey, Joe was doing his thing and did his thing so much and beat us twice while I was there. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, man, so that decision came easy, too. Florida State came flashing a little bit, but, you know, I was getting ready to go with Jonas, uh, Jonas Jennings, uh, Thad Parker, Earl Chambers, Travis Stroud. I mean, all of us was down there. Patrick Paz, uh, <laughs> Corey Robinson. You know what I mean? We had all of Atlanta uh, down there, which I don't see a whole lot. I know we're getting a lot of kids out of Cedar Grove now. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but I think we can touch up a little bit more down there uh, in that metro Atlanta area. But anyway, man, so it just really became uh, – it became an easy choice for me, you know, to get to, um, to, get to those Bulldogs and probably would have went there first if they wasn't on probation, though. But, you know, I couldn't take that chance coming out of high school, though. Right, right. So Georgia, if they weren't going through what they were going through with, with uh, violations, you probably would have went to Georgia initially? Oh, definitely, because I've seen Hans Ward's playing, yeah. you know, and, and, and you know, my idol was already doing it, Charlie Ward, and I already won a, a national championship. And so, shoot, my confidence was sky high. Ray Goff was a pretty good dude, too, by the way, you know, um, but uh, I couldn't take that chance. I didn't know what the actual sanctions was going to be, man. So. I know I wanted to go play in some bowl games, though. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. All right. So you, you come to UGA, you know what I'm saying? And as a freshman, Quincy, you started, correct? I did. Uh-huh. All right. And I'm sure you know this, but um, from my research, you was the first 
freshman start at UGA in 53 years. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's wild, bro. That says a lot. Um, so yeah. you obviously came in with a lot, you know, with a lot of you know, you came in with shoes to fill, a lot of expectations, and you had a big school. You you probably had the most prominent football school in the southeast region. So tell me about the pressure, you know, being a freshman quarterback at UGA, being from Georgia. I know that brought more pressure. Yeah. Man, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, man, now that I look back on it, man, I was feeling that adrenaline from, you know, from that energy that I got uh, at Southwest Care, you know, and being, you know, uh, being, man, I, you know, I want to be humble, but being the face of Decatur and, um, and being what, you know, the black quarterback, uh, represents, you know, as far as uh, leadership, the ability to throw the football, to run, and man, shoot, dude, I mean, everybody was behind me, um, and so I didn't feel that pressure like in 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 high school, you know, I felt the love and I felt the 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 challenge to go out and perform, but it was just like performing in front of my people, man. So. Um, so, yeah, that's what I was, you know, uh, driving off of, man. And so I just put my head down, uh, picked up some habits from uh, from actually playing baseball, too. that kept following me. I'm, I'm real about it. Um, but I was for real about, you know, winning games for UGA, representing my people at the same time, and uh, and being the best quarterback I can be and give myself a chance to go to the NFL. So, yeah, it was great playing in Georgia. I love the tradition of it. But, man, I, you know, my vision was, you know, past Georgia and winning championships and, you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, man, I, you know, I, I love UGA, man, but my dreams and goals were, you know what I mean, they were already uh, set. Yeah, they, they, was, they was beyond Georgia. Gotcha. Totally understood. All right. So you 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 play UJ for three years, right? Yep. Okay. So now it's time to take the next chapter in Quincy Carter's life. Mm -hmm. We all know it's the NFL. Um, so outside of the money, what made you decide now it's time to go in the NFL? Well, honestly, man, um uh, my 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 leader got fired in Jim Donnan. Uh, I really believed in him. Uh, he took a chance on starting me uh, when, you know, starting the black quarterback one so popular at the University of Georgia, and he gave me that shot. And honestly, you know, after getting hurt and, um, and, and the team we had coming back, uh, I thought would be pretty good, but we was graduating so many people too. You know, Marcus Stroud, uh, Seymour, Jonas, Pat. You know, it was a big nucleus, um, Javaris Johnson. And so I didn't know Mark Rick's history. Mark Rick had never been a head coach before, you know. Uh, and so in our conversation, I don't have to go into it. Um, it, it my, our conversation didn't excite me, you know. And so I knew, hey, man, it's, it's time to go. Uh, my time was up. You know, I did the best I could do. I ended up hurting my thumb and, and not playing the last seven games or what have you. Um, but it was time, man, and it was time to go be a man. Perfectly said, brother. All right, so now you enter the NFL draft, highly touted quarterback. Now, Quincy, you had a very rich quarterback class. You had Drew Brees, mm -hmm. Carter, and a guy we're going to talk about real quickly here being we're in the Falcons group. Mr. Michael Vick. Yes. Yeah. Now, on your Facebook page, you know, me and you, we go back and forth about Vic sometimes. <laughs> so tell me, Quincy, because I've seen you say it in your post before. Tell me how was it going to combines with Michael Vick, training with Michael Vick? What was that experience like? Again, this is a Falcons group. Yeah. And I've always been a fan, man. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I tell it like it is. I worked out with Michael Vick before the draft. And, and we were down in New Orleans with Tom Shaw. 
And I'm telling you, I seen it for face value, man. His speed was just, it was on another level, man. We was doing these drops with our 40 starts, and they'll have a tennis ball and hold it up. And, you know, they'll drop the tennis ball, you take off. Dude, he was uh, getting out them blocks, man, and grabbing that tennis ball like it was just, like he was back in the backyard, dude. And that <laughs> ball was bouncing twice on me before I picked it up. <laughs> and so, um, but you know, um, but Vic made me go out and compete every day too. Vic made me, man, I didn't go out not one time when we was in New Orleans because I seen what I was facing for the first time. That was world-class talent, you know, and he just did everything with ease, man. And a good, humble dude, bro. I'm talking about good people, man. Um, but, uh, but man, it was, it was, it was uh it was fun, man, to be honest with you, to compete with him every day, man. Um, it was a little bittersweet. He came home. Well, I came home and I my first game, my rookie year, that was his first start, but I was still hurt. I had had surgery. Oh yeah. man, I was I was devastated. And then it happened again in 03. I was starting, and then that's the year he broke his leg, so I never got to play against him, but you know I wanted to. That's my dog, though, uh, but I wanted to so bad. But uh, but it didn't happen, man. It didn't happen. Uh, but, man, that's a good dude, man. But, you know, I, I, I get my competition on that. You best believe that. I know you do. I know you do. Yeah, I'm going to compete. And speaking of Vic, speaking of yourself, Quincy, um, you both had very similar paths. You you mentioned the, the, the black quarterback situation. Yeah. Michael Vick was the first black quarterback chosen first in the NFL draft, the first starting black quarterback for our Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. And you, you're drafted by America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. So tell us about the pressure and what kind of situations you face as a black quarterback playing playing for the Cowboys. You're playing for Dallas. That's that's really Hollywood, when it A-list Hollywood when it comes to NFL franchises. Yeah. Man, I, I've been able to do the do like do some real like looking back on my life because, you know, because of my addiction. So I've been able to really get into it, man. And honestly, you know, after really just laying it out on the line, it was never really about the Cowboys to me. And I've said this before, man. It was about me proving that I can play in the NFL, you know, because I was not so uh, highly talented out of Georgia. You know, after breaking my thumb, I wouldn't get drafted. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I was getting ready to go in the first round before this season. Now, how am I just can't play football? So, man, I was so focused on that. Uh, I felt it, you know, honestly. Uh, when I was there, I felt the tradition. It was real. You know, uh, getting in that, you know, huddle with Emmett, uh, Emmett and Larry Allen, you know, that was surreal. You know what I mean? The first time that happened. But then after, you know, the dust settled, the butterflies was gone, man. It was about, you know, working my butt off, man, to be the starting quarterback, you know, for the Dallas Cowboys. But in my mind, you know, hey, you got to go out and prove you can, you know, uh, play in the NFL, and then go win some games. So I always had my own personal goals, man. But, you know, uh, it was a dream come true, though. Yeah, and a dream that only, like, probably 1% of athletes uh, will ever accomplish. So, you know, that that was an excellent accomplishment on your part. And um, speaking of that, Quincy, uh, you, you're on Facebook. You see guys like me always talking about sports. You know, we know it all. One thing about those fans – we're, we're the best head coaches in the world. We're the best general managers in the world. And we're the best owners in the world. So tell the common Joe, like myself, what's something that us fans don't understand about playing in the NFL? Oh, you girl, <laughs> give me Ooh. You know, I throw my jabs out there, but I ain't supposed to throw my jabs out there live like this. But, uh, man. Hey. Bring it. Uh, I, I, I just keep it simple because I respect people's opinion too now, you know, because a lot of us didn't play the game too and understand it and then sitting at home studying it too. So I do respect that. But that quarterback position and the maturation of that QB, 
and what all it entails from how where who you get drafted to, how they're developing you as a passer, what uh what type of team you got around you, who are your playmakers, what defense you got uh that's going to try to give you some extra possessions. You know, there's so many factors in that quarterback position. How you getting reps in practice? Heck, man, when I was uh, my second year in the end, uh, my second year with the Cowboys, I literally was sharing reps with Chad Hutchinson. I mean, all the reps, like first team reps, but I was the starting quarterback, but he was getting half the reps. Mm. So, man, it's such a game within a game behind closed doors that a lot of people don't understand. So, uh, I guess I'm saying when I say something about quarterbacks, man, just believe it. <laughs> yeah, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, and let's stay right here, QC. Let's stay right here. Because um, you have said something a few times that I, I picked up and even talked to you and discussed with you before. But you said, and I'm paraphrasing, you don't really like RPO, read play option for quarterbacks. Um, because you, and again, I'm paraphrasing because it seems like you you think it kind of hinders their maturation, as you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Tell, me, tell me exactly in your own words, what why don't you like RPOs for college quarterbacks? The the main reason is these kids from eight years old all the way through high school and college, if that offense is running it, is doing this, doing this to watching the defensive end watching a linebacker, and their eyes are trained like that. So now, because, you know, these hash marks are so spread out in high school and college, so you can spread people out, and these guys ain't fast enough. In college, I mean, the NFL, these hash marks get condensed. So that, you know, offense that's been implanted in your head and your eyes doing this and looking down for so many years, that maturation process I'm talking about, that's how you're building, you know, your computer system coming up. So now you can't run that effectively all the time, you know, when you get to the NFL. So now it's a whole nother type of, you know, um, development that has to happen. Now the guys with the big arm and and and, and the size, yeah, they're going to actually, you know, uh, and, and can do some things in the pocket, move around, find guys. You know, the talent always rises to the top. But all of these other guys now are not getting the same opportunity, you know, that uh, a Doug Flutie might get, you know, because now Doug Flutie came up in a different way where he was always throwing and seeing the field. But now some of our 5, 10, 5, 11 guys who are being used as athletes now you know, their maturation process gets hindered so much because their eyes are down. Now you're in the NFL. Now you got to see everything. And so now, you know, with the less uh, reps that you get now, as far as the OTAs, don't nobody want to practice no more. <laughs> Everybody lazy. Yeah. That's fine. The injuries didn't went up. So now those quarterbacks don't get all those uh, opportunities to get those extra reps you know, in your OTAs and your mini camps that you said, man, we used to have mini camps, man. And you, I mean, you really felt like you was out there like in training camp, man. Mm-hmm. That's how you left the practice field. Now you can't even wear pads twice, you know, uh, two days in a row. So now these quarterback reps and things they need to work on, you need live action, man, especially after doing all these things for so many years. Uh, to take it really take your game to that next level, and uh, and I think it's just ha- and then uh, I didn't even mention this. Hell, they even thinking for the quarterback. You're going to the line. Of, they are. You're going to the line of scrimmage. Somebody in the booth. Somebody on the sideline don't like it. Everybody look towards the sideline. Do you? <laughs> man. And so, man, uh, it's hampering guys, man. And the guys who play in the pro system, or unless you just got exceptional talent you know, that can override that, then, uh, you know, a lot of guys getting left by the wayside, man, because of that. And then we don't have a developmental league, you know? True. So, Very yeah. True. There, it, it seems like every every professional uh, sport has that other than football for some reason. 
Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, it's it's hurting us. It's yeah. hurting the position, man. And I really care. I do this. I know you do. I, I definitely yeah. do. I, I see what you do. Mm -hmm. And let me clue the people in, uh, Quincy. You're a Chicago Bears fan, right? <laughs> I am. <laughs> hey, I can't lie. I'm a Falcons fan. I, I, hey, I ain't got no jokes. I am. I am. I, I just want to reel the people in with it, where the basis of, of this, this statement is coming from. You was watching Justin Fields when he got his first start when you made that statement, right? Mm -hmm. All right, speaking of Justin Fields, let's, let's, let's go back to college real quickly, and we're going to go past that. But um, during the Justin Fields, Jake Fromm situation, you were one of the few that kind of looked like me that wasn't pounding on Kirby. You kind of you was you kind of kept a neutral perspective from what I could tell. Like, hey, y'all just don't understand the position that Kirby is in. Um, can you can you kind of give me some information? Like, was it was it hard to sit a guy like Jake Fromm down after he just took you to a national championship game as a freshman? For somebody like Justin, who was obviously a better athlete, but it may not necessarily mean that it was going to be what's best for the team. Can can we can we just talk on that real quick and we can go in the past a little bit? Yeah, man. You know, um, first of all, Georgia was just coming off a, a, a national championship game. Uh, and if it wasn't for a, a blown coverage or what have you, um, then we talking about we just won a national championship. Jake Fromm solidified himself throughout the season and had a good playoff run. If you're going to start Justin Fields, then you got to start him from day one. You know, um, but Justin Fields did not win that job in the preseason. So now how do you develop a guy who's been running the read option? Now we're talking about uh, a system that doesn't, actually fit him you know and i talked about that in my recruiting process at, at the time to be honest with you i would have never stepped foot on georgia's campus if i was justin field just because you have from coming back it's not so much that read option system so now you asking uh georgia to, to have two offenses going and you don't have all that time to prepare for a read option system you know our regular um uh, pro offense system that we, you know, had been accustomed to. So, man, it was just bad timing, uh, honestly. Uh, I thought, and, and to be honest with you, nobody looked at this. Well, when Justin's coming in, you already got an, an incumbent starter who, you know, almost took us to a national championship win. Well, now you're taking reps from uh, from from in his development, <laughs> you know, so, man, I, I just think it was just bad timing, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I, 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 I wish it wouldn't have been that year. I wish you – hell, wish he would have just came out last year, and then it would have been perfect, you know. Yeah. But it was just bad timing, man. And, you know, that was one of our best teams we've ever had besides this year. I'm talking about yeah. the history of Georgia, of what we had coming back. So it was just the worst timing to ever he could be coming out, man. Do you, do you think yeah. that affected the team in a negative way, having to deal with all that was going on with the quarterback controversy? Not, not. I don't even know if it's more so negative than what they had to prepare for. The linemen literally had to prepare for two offenses. You know what I mean? So, yes. And then when your quarterback position is never solidified like that, then, yeah, you know, it's going, you know, have some grumblings going on in the locker room for sure. That's natural. Yeah, cause some you got some guys that gonna be on team from. You got some guys gonna be on team fields. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. but it was just bad timing, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I felt bad for Kirby. It was bad timing. But I'll be honest with you, people might not like this. I would have started from man from the get go because yeah. I know Fields wasn't ready of what he showed in the preseason, and I know that personally. You know what I mean? Yeah. You you told me that plenty of times, Quince, because you know I always come on your post and like, no, you know what I'm saying? No. But you said that plenty of times, man, and I, I definitely respect that too, brother. Um yeah. I want to quickly talk about the Falcons and the Super Bowl. Then I'm gonna let you get out of here. I want to keep I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, you did watch the Falcons in the Super Bowl in 2016, I assume, right? 
Oh, yes, I did. No, I wanted that for the city. Don't get it twisted. And first of all, let's clear this Bears thing. My Chicago ties and me going to Chicago every summer, my grandparents, that's all it was. Bears, Bulls, Cubs, Blackhawks. And so that's how it happened. But no, I wanted it for the city, though. And we threw fans up in Chicago just like y'all. Yeah. So, man, don't hold, don't hold it against all my foes, no. You know yeah. what I mean? But, uh, but man, I wanted that for the city. That was going to be good for the city. So, right. no, I was hurt. I was hurt with y'all. <laughs> That win, man, was going to be good for the city, period. Period, like you said. And I want to ask you this, speaking of that Super Bowl question, since, since we got somebody with your pedigree who can finally talk to us about this Super Bowl. I'm going to tell you, Quincy, um, that Super Bowl has really ripped this fan base apart on all angles. The psyche, the mentality, the morale, Every every passing day, even when we don't talk about it, it's in front of our face. One of the biggest things about that Super Bowl that we lost has been the quarterback play. You got some people that blame the quarterback, some people that blame the offensive coordinator, some people that blame the defense. A, a very polarizing topic of discussion within our fan base is Matt Ryan should have been calling audibles. You've been a former NFL quarterback. i like to ask you this question. Is it that easy to call audibles in that situation, or is it more than meets the eye when you're actually a quarterback in the NFL? Yeah. Man, when, when you're in the thick of things like that, uh, you know, the defense is giving you uh, is giving you what they're giving you, and, uh, and if your game plan has been going in, uh, say, you know, we get six in the box, uh, we're going to run, we get seven in the box, we're going to throw. And whatever that defense is giving you and you didn't win in uh, with that game plan, man, it's hard, you know, uh, sometimes, man, to go against what you truly believe and what work you didn't put in in those two weeks, man. And I just – honestly, I think they went for the gusto. The defense didn't help nobody, and they didn't stop nobody, though. Um so we hey we they we needed a couple stops too, um, but uh, but man that's just tough sledding because I can you know I can feel um, of the mindset of you know what Shanahan and Matt Ryan was into, um, and then what they game plan was. And then man hell we're competitors man sure we want to put somebody away too at the same time, you know. Uh, but the defense didn't stop nobody either though. Yeah, that's facts. That's facts. So what I'm getting from your answer is you can't put all that on Matt Ryan in that kind of situation based on what you game plan for, based on what you practice for the last two weeks. It's not as easy as we think it is to call audible. Am I correct? Well, you know something? I don't even know about even him making audibles. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that game plan, man. You know that's what I mean? You really don't. And then, you know, what was going on on the headset as far as trying to finish them off, because that's what it looked like, you know. What if uh, Julio Jones make that catch? Uh, what if, you know, uh, the defense stops somebody? So it's so many factors. It's just so unfortunate, bro. We're going to be talking about this for a long time. A long time, bro. A unless, long. They do about it, unless they do something about it. Yep. All right, Quincy, we're going to wrap up, man. I can't keep it too long. Uh, I got one last segment before I let you get out of here, Quincy. Um, we have something that we finish off that's called Three Word Molly. Now, you being from Atlanta, I know you know what Three Car Molly is, right? I don't. <laughs> well, it's a street car game. Okay. So I don't. You know what else I don't know about? I didn't grow up with all these zones, one, two, three, four, and five, six. I don't know when, when we do that. Yeah. I think, I think that came around the early 2000s when guys like T.I. Yeah. Claiming zones and stuff like that, but you're right. Oh, really? when you, was in you just represented wherever you was from. It wasn't no zones, but you're right. But I love, yeah, I missed out on three card Molly too. <laughs> but we gonna do three word Molly. I'm gonna explain it to you real quick. It's kind of like a game, but it's rapid fire. I'm gonna say a. I'm gonna say somebody's name. You give me three three words or less. The first thing that comes to your mind is three words or less. There's no explanations. There's no follow-up questions, and it's real quick, real rapid fire. 
Three words or less, okay? You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Emma Smith. You got to go fast. Best, best ever running back. Gotcha. Patrick Mahomes. Quick, elusive, dynamic. I'm not good at this. <laughs> huh? Off the blank. Off the blank. Save the, save the Falcons, please. <laughs> Bruce Smith. A monster that you don't want to see. <laughs> Evander Holyfield. Please stop boxing. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dog. If you own him, but you my dog, though, no, but it's time. It's time. <laughs> Mike Vick. Man, he's sick with it. Greg Maddox. Just one of the old timers chip off the block. I'm, I just made that. I don't know what I'm saying now. Dak Prescott, the the best in the game right now. Yeah, that's your boy. Yeah, Julio Jones. Damn, what happened? Mike Singletary. <laughs> Who? Mike Singletary. That's our best ever linebacker in uh, in Chicago. Lamar Jackson. Damn, he's good. Barry Bonds. Damn, why? But I feel some drug tests too, but why? <laughs> Tom Brady. Tom Brady? Damn, how long he going to be this good? For real. And finally, Deion Sanders. My God dang idol. Quincy Carter. Quincy, also, before I let you get out of here, man, uh, you are doing a, a very wonderful thing right now for, for the youth, for the kids. Um, I see you out here, man. You got some QB camps going on. You're you, you teaching these kids. You've been a positive role model. You're doing a lot of mentorship, work with our children. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with your quarterback camps uh, and also training these young athletes. So please tell us a little bit about that, please. Man, uh, man, I, I speak uh, volumes, uh, um, and 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 I don't cut loose with with uh, me being in recovery, man, and uh, you know, really falling hard in addiction, man. After I got cut with the Cowboys, I know you didn't bring it up, but I just be so real about it, man. I'm just trying to get to these kids' ears, man, that weed ain't legal. Weed ain't legal in what we do. It went from weed to uh, X coke, drinking my head off, man. Just because I I leaned on a on a plant, and then when I couldn't stop, man, you know, um, everything just uh, everything just went crazy from there. So I'm trying to get to them, you know, uh, and let them know, man, go live your life. You don't want this pain right here. I work in recovery right now at a rehab. I'm the alumni coordinator at the rehab I work to work work at. I mean that I went to, and uh, and I'm out here working with these quarterbacks, man. Really teaching them the intricacies of being, you know, of, 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 uh, of the fundamental part of the game, but then getting in the right mindset of how to be a leader. You know, uh, getting in that classroom, man, being the first one on and off that field, man. So just the little things, man. I'm holding quarterback camps. If anybody want to um, book me for speaking engagements or quarterback camps or clinics, man, you can get in touch with me on Quincy. Uh, I'm sorry, Quincy at QuincyCarter17.com. That's Quincy at QuincyCarter17.com. And give me your website too, Quincy. Oh, shoot. I didn't give – yeah, well, I'm giving you my email. <laughs> <laughs> Just hit me at Quincy Carter 17com That's Quincy Carter 17 17com Dot com, y'all. Yeah. yeah, Quincy Carter 17com I didn't give you the email. It's all right. It's all right. I'm, I'm going to post it up, man, so everybody can, you know, follow yeah. up. Quincy. I just want to, before you go, I just want to let you know I didn't get a chance to read everybody's comments, but every comment that I did click on, 
anytime your name came up, it was legend in front of it, man. So you got a lot of love from this fan base. Atlanta still got your back. Atlanta yeah. still got your back. You still I see, you still, and I still, still got the Taylor in Atlanta back too. Oh, you, for sure. You still the first we, white big man. And we, we, and we, we got all hey, we got a love affair that won't end. And when right. God, when God do his thing in movement, everybody know it's on. It's on in Atlanta. We're going to do this thing the right way this time, man. I'm going to try to humble myself right now because, boy, I'm telling you, I want this that quarterback position, man, to be right, man. But uh, And shoot, and saving some lives, man, who may have some addiction, man. But we're going to always be right here together. Atlanta know I love them. That's right. Quincy, before you get out of here, man, I want to thank you. We want to thank you for your time, for talking to us, brother. Um, if you don't mind, please stay in the group because, you know, as I told you, we, we psycho Fal Falcons fans. So sometimes we need a professional's perspective. So anytime you see us getting out of line, please chime in, calm us down. But God bless you, brother, and thank you so much for your time, man. God bless you too, man. It was just talk, hey, talking to my homeboys back home, man. All love. That's what it is. Love, bro. Get to your football game, man. Ah, uh, that's a bit, boy. Peace. Yep. All right, y'all. We had Quincy joining us, man. That was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed talking to the brother, man. Uh, excellent, excellent brother, man. You know, he gave us a lot of gems, uh, a lot of insight, um, a lot of stuff on the, the Jake from Justin Fields situation from from a ex per perspective you know somebody who played at uga somebody who was an nfl quarterback and also um some insight on our super bowl also y'all you know so it, it it may not have been as easy as a lot of us thought it was for matt to take control and uh and call audibles man so um i really just i, I appreciate quince's time man because um i hit that brother spur of the moment just out, you know, just hit him up. Say, hey, Quincy, will you come do an interview for with me? And within 10 seconds, he was like, yeah, when is it? You know, yeah, let's do it. You know, so um, I thank Quincy a, a whole lot, man. And I, and I thank y'all uh, for, for coming in and checking it out. And, uh, you know, hopefully he'll stay in our group and just give us his professional insight. And, um, again, ABG, I sure appreciate y'all holding me down. I apologize. I did not get to read y'all comments. But um, it's kind of hard to read the comments and listen to him and then stay focused on what I needed to ask him. So I uh, apologize that I didn't get to read everybody's comments. And um, I'm going to try to get us some more people in here to come to the Cigar Lounge, sit down, and talk to us, y'all. Hey, but y'all be good. We got a big game coming up on Sunday. It's time to, time to get this winning streak going. Washington football team is officially on the clock. And I am officially out of here.